Hello, I'm Emmanuel. Welcome back to Emoji Economics. And our ESS, we give a short course that you know our ESS actually this summation y at square. And we worked out a faster way of working that so we call it this. So we beta 2 squared summation x squared. So squaring at beta 2 and multiplying by summation xi squared, which is 330, will give us the ESS. And so when we just subtract this from this, we get our RSS automatically and we can divide by 8 in this case where the degree of freedom is 8 10 minus 2 8 we divide by 8 to get our population variance or the or the variance of the error term is the variance of the error term uh, is also the variance of y of the dependent variable so and once we have that we can easily plug it in to get our variance of beta 1 and as well get the standard error and we'll be able to calculate the confidence interval and also run our test to see if the estimates we generated are statistically similar. Okay, so calculating the confidence interval for beta 1, we've, we have the values for the cutoff, the cutoff values for beta 1 as the estimated beta 1 plus or minus our t value at the significance level, 5% significance level and 8 degree of freedom times the standard error of beta 1 so our uh, estimated beta 1 is 2.447 okay so we're trying to get the cutoff values now plus or minus this times the standard error which we've estimated using the formula for the standard error okay and with this we have 2.447 plus or minus this times this will give us 1.484 okay so what this means is that our confidence interval for beta 1 is between 2.447 plus 1.484 and 2.447 minus 1.484 okay so our confidence interval for beta 1 is between 0 0.963 to 3.931 okay so the true parameter for beta 1 Population estimates for beta 1 is expected to fall, is likely going to be within this range. Okay, so that's for our beta 1. Then the same thing for beta 2. The confidence interval for beta 2, and that will be given to the streets. Beta 2, that will be the estimated beta 2. We're working with this formula. Estimated beta 2, which is 0 0.509 plus that, and on the other hand, this minus 2.306 times standard error. Okay, so we have 2.306 times the standard error of beta 2, which is 0 0.03587. So same way as we are going to subtract 2.306 times 0.03587. Okay, so 0.509 minus 2.306 times 0.587 will give us a little 0.083. So we expect our beta 2 population parameter to be between 0 0.426 as the lower bound for the 95% confidence um, interval and 
So, okay, so the marginal pressure to cause you know, will be between this. So, you see, this, this um, it follows our definition of confidence interval earlier. We are trying to build some sort of bounds around the point estimate. So, rather than just say, um, our marginal pressure to cause you is 0 0.509. Which is what you estimated. We, we can we can say that well, to be kind of realistic, we expect that the true marginal pressure column is most likely likely be between 0.426 and 0.592, given our level of confidence. Okay, so that's all with estimating the confidence interval. Next, we will test the significance, the significance of beta 1 and beta 2 and the null hypothesis will be of this and null hypothesis will be that beta 1 is 0 and the same thing beta 2 is 0 the alternative will be that it is not 0 the alternative hypothesis ok so we will test that and we will compare with our t statistic what we we'll got from the table actually 2.306. We compute our t statistics and compare with that to decide whether to reject the null hypothesis that is zero or not to reject the null hypothesis. We compute our t statistic for beta 1. We said this the estimated minus the true over the standard error of what we estimated. Now the estimated for beta 1 is 2.447 2.447 Now what is the true parameter? We are trying to test that it's 0 right? So we are assuming that actually is 0 That we are trying to see Then do we accept it is 0 or reject that it is 0? That's what we are trying to do with this um, hypothesis testing here This test of significance So divided by the standard error of beta 1 the standard error of beta 1 is 0 0.6437 so this will be 2.447 divided by 0 0.6437 uh, the statistics for beta 1 is 3.8015 ok 3.8015 and so we see that this is greater is greater than 2.306. Remember the diagram that was drawn earlier, the T diagram, and here we had a rejection region. I said um, here was 2.306 minus 2.306. So you put, we've, we've tried to normalize at 2.447 to 80 statistic, and if you put this, try to put this on this graph. 3.8015 will be somewhere around here and it falls in the rejection region so that means we reject the null hypothesis we reject the null hypothesis and when we reject null hypothesis we are saying that beta 1 is significant so that's the interpretation we are rejecting that it is that beta 1 is 0 it is statistically so beta 1 is actually statistically significant it is not 0 it is statistically significant so next for the test of significance for beta 2 it computes beta 2 um, t statistics and same way beta 2 minus the null divided by the standard error of beta 2 so beta 2 here was 0 0.509 minus the null. The null is saying is 0. There's no relationship. You know, if this beta 2 is actually 0, what it means is that whatever the x values we are getting is not influencing y. So when beta 2 is 0, it's like saying that there's no relationship between consumption and income. So if we accept or we do not reject that, this hypothesis, it means there is no relationship but if we reject it, it means it is significant and there is a relationship so let's see what our answer will be 
So this is divided by the standard error of beta 2. Standard error of beta 2 is 0 0.03587. So 0.509 divided by 0.03587. It is statistics for beta 2 will be 14.190147 seconds before. So we see again that this is also greater than this total value. It's also greater than this. And because it is greater than that, we reject we reject the null hypothesis and we say that this is statistically significant. So as no question is statistically significant, statistically different from zero, it's not zero. And um, what that means is there's a relationship. The relationship between consumption and income actually exists. So this is what we can do with we for that test we can subject our estimates to we can sort of draw out the confidence interval as we've seen and also test. These values, it could one might say that I'm testing if the beta 2 is 0 0.7 as we mentioned earlier. So here you just change it to 0 0.7 and derive your T and C statistics compare with the cutoff value. And remember this depends on your degree of freedom and the level of significance which you take. So that brings us to the end of this discussion on confidence interval and hypothesis testing using what we got from our OLS estimation. Remember, this is just the two variable case. If you are dealing with more, multiple regression, you will be testing for beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, on and on. And there's also what we call the joint test, which you also do the F test and several other tests which can be done. So if you found this useful, please like, like this video. Subscribe to this channel if you've not done so and also turn on the notification for to get updates by hitting the notification bell. Your comments are valued. We'd like to see them. Please put them in the comment box. And thank you for staying with us. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the video you just saw. If you want more of our videos, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. Now there is a way to enjoy to make the best of our YouTube channel, which is to go to the playlist section of every video or of every topic. So what you have to do is just type emoji economics on YouTube. When the page displays, you know, make sure you subscribe. A bell button appears immediately, so you click on that bell button. Then go to the playlist section. So you are going to see our videos, playlist, description, and all of that. So just go to the playlist section and whatever topic you are looking for, click on look for the playlist and click on um, the video. Now our playlists have their classes, have the classes are arranged in a very chronological manner so if you want to see a class on ISLM so it starts from the beginning the simple ones to the um, difficult to the complex ones so if you want to see a video on let's say elasticity of demand so you start from what is price elasticity so from there then to the basic ones and on and on so I'm just telling you that in case you really want to make the best of this YouTube channel and there's also one thing that I want to add um, which is that our YouTube classes may not be enough for you may want um, you may want a regular interaction with um, with the tutors and all of that. So what you just have to do is to check the description of the video. You are going to find a WhatsApp link. So, but before you do that, I really have to tell you that clicking that link is going to lead you to our one of our schools. So it's going to lead to some of our schools. So we have um, MOG School of Economics on WhatsApp and we make it of our YouTube channel to run the groups. So the classes are paid for, so you are meant to pay for them. So to join our econometric school, so that is 2,500 Naira per month. And to join our microeconomics or macroeconomic schools, so that is 2,000 Naira per month. We also have, our math, we don't have classes or we don't have schools of mathematical economics because, you know, uh, microeconomics has its mathematical aspects as well as macroeconomics. So the mathematical aspect of macroeconomics is treated with is treated in the macroeconomic school, and the mathematical aspect of microeconomics is treated with the micro, microeconomic school as well. So I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.